Hello everybody and welcome back to the Texas Podcast. I am your host Gabe and today we will be talking about the formation and structure of the Texas military force throughout its time as a republic. Today we're going to be starting with the Texan militia, which the Texan militia was a militia force of Texan colonists in the Mexican state of Coahuila, Texas from 1823 to 1835 and the inaugurate force of the Texas military. It was established by Stephen F. Austin on August 5th, 1823 for defense of the old 300 colonists against Karankawa, Comanche, and Cherokee tribes. Among others, its most notable unit, the Texas Rangers, remained in continuous service of Texas military forces until 1935. The Texan militia sparked the Texas Revolution at the Battle of Velasco and became legendary at the Battle of Gonzales, which marked its transition to the Texian Army and the Texian Navy. The legend continued at the Battle of the Alamo as the only relief force to answer to the people of Texas and all Americans in the world letter. The Texan militia compromised 22% of the Texan Army's service members who fought until the Battle of San Jacinto, helping the Texan government win independence from the Centralist Republic of Mexico on May 14, 1836 at the Treaties of Velasco. The Texan militia was first authorized on February 18, 1823 by Augustin de Iturbide of the First Mexican Empire who ordered the impresario Stephen F. Austin to organize the colonists into a body of militia to preserve tranquility. On August 5, 1823, Austin officially established the Texan militia. Since the commencement of, his, of the colony, no labor or expense had been ex- had been spared on my part towards its organization, benefit, and security, and I shall always be ready and willing to risk my health, my property, or my life for the common advantage of those who embarked with me in this enterprise. As proof of the reality of this declaration, I have determined to augment at my own private expense the company of men which was raised by order of the late Governor Jose Felix Trespalacios for the defense of the colony against hostile Indians. I therefore by these presents give public notice that I will employ ten men in addition to those employed by the government to act as rangers for the common defense. The said ten men will form a part of Lieutenant Moses Morrison's company and the whole will be subject to my orders. The wages I will give the said ten men is fifteen dollars a month payable in property they finding themselves. Those who wish to be employed will apply without delay. Stephen F. Austin, the 5th of August, 1823. End of quote. In 1823, the first Mexican Empire transitioned to the Provisional Government of Mexico, which established the first Mexican Republic in 1824. In 1828, the Coahuila y Tejas legislature ordered colonists to form a militia to defend themselves. The only units made up of the Texan militia was the Bejar unit, the Goliad unit, the Rangers, the Gonzales Ranging Company, and the San Felipe unit. Their most notable engagements was, well, the Skull Creek Massacre, which happened in 1823 and was a victory for the militia. Their casualties during that battle were zero. The Battle of Jones Creek, which was in 1824, which was the outcome of it was inconclusive and their casualties are unknown. The Dressing Point Massacre, which happened in 1826, which was a victory and the militia had zero casualties there. And in 1826, the Fredonian Rebellion, which was an insurrection, and that was also a victory. They lost no men there either. The Battle of Anahuac, which happened in 1832, that outcome was a victory. They only lost one man. The Battle of Velasco, which was also in 1832, was a victory. Their casualties there are unknown as well. The Battle of Nacogdoches, which was in 1832, was a victory. They had four men who were killed and three wounded. The Anahuac disturbance of 1835, which was of course in 1835, was a victory. They lost zero men there too. The Battle of Gonzales, which was part of the revolution, which was in 1835, was a victory. and There they lost zero men. And the last conflict that they were in was the Siege of the Alamo, which was in 1836. They were the relief force, also known as the Gonzales Ranging Company. There, Their outcome of the battle was a loss, and their casualties were 32. Since 1823, the Texas militia had undergone many redesignations and reorganizations in the Texas military force. The Texas militia was stayed at the militia after the revolution, 
and they stayed the militia during the Republic of Texas. They were redesignated as the Texas Home Guard slash State Troops in 1861 through 1865 during the American Civil War. They became the Texas Volunteer Guards from 1871 to 1904, the Reconstruction Era. And following the Militia Act of 1903, the Texas Militia was divided into separate forces. One, the Texan Army National Guard and Texas Air National Guard, subject to Title 32 and Title 10 of the United States Code, which legally empowers the United States government to mobilize it when more resources are needed than available in the United States Armed Forces for war, national emergency, or national security. Two, the Texas State Guard, only subject to Title 32 of the United States Code, which legally empowers individual states to maintain military forces. Since 1903, the Texas National Guard designation has remained the same, while the Texas State Guard has been designated as the Texas Reserve Militia from 1905 to 1913, the Texas Home Guard from 1914 to 1918, the Texas Reserve Militia from 1919 to 1940, the Texas Defense Slash State Guard 1941 through 1945, the Texas State Guard Reserve Corps, which was 1945 to 1965, and lastly, the Texas State Guard, which was 1965 through the present. And that is all for the Texas Militia. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one.